I'm, as she said, Barbara Alice Mann. I'm uh, from the land of the three Miamis, which is called Ohio, even though Ohio means beautiful river, and it's in Mississippi. Um, I'm talking about the mother-father sides of the twin cosmos, and these are ideas that uh, probably most of you have never heard of before. It's the uh, philosophical structure of uh, actually all of the Americas, if you stop and think about it. I use the term mother-father um, from uh, the sixth family, uh, Jan V. Hewitt was sixth family, and that's Tuscarora. He said, okay, this is the best way to explain it is the mother-father sides of the twin cosmos. Uh, there is breath, which is identified male as a fractal of breath, female as a fractal of blood. West of the Mississippi River, you're more likely to hear it expressed as water and air, but it's the same difference. I noticed in the program that all of us are listed by our nations. That's just the air. That's the breath side. The clan is the most important. I'm bear clan. I'm bear clan. That is the most important identification of anyone. That is your blood clan. Uh, what you see up there, and I'm sorry it didn't, uh, doesn't project very well. It's too much light in here. But these are nomination belt. Uh, Kai Oon has uh, drew this. Uh, he's Mohawk. The blood is the black stripe through there. It's actually uh, a purple. The purple of this shirt is, is the blood color. Um, the white background is the breath, so it's the blood that holds everything together. The women nominate uh, people to office, but you need both the female and the male to complete the twin cosmos. And that's about as much philosophy as I want to give you because we, uh, we don't really care that much about philosophy. That's uh, a Western thing. Um, here she is doing the appropriate female thing. She is um, giving strength. She's giving potency. Um, we honor. We, uh, prayer is another European style word. We honor. We honor the water. He's honoring the air. Uh, and he is most connected with breath. She is most connected with blood. So he's, he's talking to the air. She's uh, exchanging energies with the water. That is blood and breath. Okay, sweat lodges. I want to talk to you a little bit and tell you some stories about some of these things. Most of our stories are 9, 10, 15 day cycles, and I'm supposed to do this in 15 minutes. Okay, sweat lodges, and I've seen feminists have some really terrible interface with sweat lodge. Um, they go, oh, oh, the men do it. The men have it. Why do the men have it and the women don't have it? The women were excluded. No, that's not what's going on at all. That is not at all what's going on. And uh, Westerners coming in with their assumptions about patriarchy ruling and the women have been downtrodden and we must take the sweat latch for, you know, talk to us, find out what the story is. Okay, the story is women are very powerful. Women have the ability to bleed and not die for a week, every month, every moon, grandmother moon. Women bleed for about a week, but they do not die. And if they do not bleed, it's because they are using that blood, instead of giving it back to Mother Earth, they're making another being, which they will pull out of their own body. That is pretty darn powerful. Now, long time ago, long time ago, when we were uh, just uh, beginning to wear skins, because we promised the animals would will use every part of their gift of life to us. And so uh, we had these extra skins, these buffalo ropes, these other ropes. What, what do you do with it? Well, I guess you wear it. <laughs> yeah. So around the time that we were wearing the skins, the men became very, very dejected. And they stood over there, they stood over there, and they said, those people, those people, why can they bleed for a week and not die? Because what happens if a man bleeds? He's injured. He's sick. There's something wrong with him. The only thing that men can make from blood is death. But women make life from blood, so the men are very sad. And they're over there. And they, they don't know what to do about this. And the women don't like to see the men so sad. Because that's our sons. Those are our uncles. Those are the grandfathers. Those are our little boys. We don't want to see them over there crying. So the women said, huh. How can we help men to have a monthly cycle like we do? 
and men sweat about once a month. Why are they doing it? That's male menstruation. We gave them the sweat lodge. That's male menstruation. And before the missionaries got in there and stopped them, men cut themselves. They are bleeding ceremonially. That is their menstruation. So if you walk in their sweat lodge and you demand to sit there because they're doing something and the women are involved, we gave them that. We gave them that so they could menstruate. Coyote took away their menstruation. It was a trick. So we gave it back to them. Now, women do not sweat unless they are ill or unless they've killed something. Women are born pure. It's the men who have to sweat because they can't bleed and not die. So we gave them that. Women have a habitation lodge. Moon Lodge is not a sweat lodge. It's a habitation lodge. The women deliberately synchronize their menses, and you sit together. It's very powerful. So the women have their own lodge. Now, this is the men's lodge, and we don't take that away from them. And I've seen feminists say, oh, why are only men sitting on that drum? What's the matter with the men won't let the women have the drum? Oh, they don't know the story. And so you see these feminists go in, and they grab the, the uh, bangers, and, and they sit on the drum, and they throw away the men. <sighs> okay, again, we don't have patriarchy. That is not the story. Ask us the story, for heaven's sake. The story is the men are very sad. We gave them the sweat lodge. Now they have menses. But they still don't have what we have. Women can make a second heartbeat beneath their own. Women can spend nine months with two heartbeats. Okay? Men can't do that. The men are very sad. They say, we can't make a heartbeat below our own heart. And the women didn't want to see them sad. Those are, those are our brothers. Those are little boys. Those are our uncles. We don't want to see them cry. So the women said, what can we do? What can we do? Oh, hey, we had some cloth. We didn't quite know what to do with this deer skin. So one of the women were looking at me and saying, now how can they make a second heartbeat, but not with blood, but with breath? How can they do that? And we thought a long time. And then one woman said, well, let's put this skin over this hollow log because that'll make air. And then we took some more of the skin, we wrapped a, a spoon with it, and, and it made air, it made air. And we said, oh, men, come here, come here, don't cry anymore, don't cry anymore. Now you sit here and you take this spoon wrapped with the deer skin, and you, and you, you hit this. And now they've got another heartbeat they can make a heartbeat out of air. We make the heartbeat out of blood. They make the heartbeat out of air. Boom, 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 boom. That's synchronizing with the heartbeat of Mother Earth, and now they can do it too. That's why men sit on the drum. He's their little boy. He's their beloved little boy. If women sit on that drum, they kill little boy. Don't kill little boy. Don't take that away. We gave that to them. Okay, these are some of the women. Women have special care of the earth. We take care of the earth. The men take care of the air. And by the way, when we say air, we mean outer space. We don't mean the blue atmosphere that belongs to the earth. And this is just uh, some of the Ohio women. This is uh, the eldest wom woman there is uh, Barbara Crandall. She's Bird Clan Cherokee. We're the two, we're the two mm, major grandmothers in Ohio. All right, now, you've probably heard about planting mounds, and uh, this is an artist's rendering. It's uh, kind of close. A mound is going to be about that big. It's a planting mound. We don't like stoop labor. <laughs> so we plant the mound right at arm's length. So it's right out here about four feet high. You're a car, kind of tall. Um, and what do we do? We plant sister corn. Oh, I'm sorry, the drawing is not showing as well as it should. Sister corn is right on the very top. We noticed corn makes milk. Corn makes milk. Those planting mounds are breasts of Mother Earth. Sister corn, the eldest sister, she likes the sun, so we put her right up there. She's the nipple. The milk comes from there. Now, little sister bean, she, she's uh, a little bit weak. She has to hang on to her big sister, you know. You got your little sister climbing up you. She's climbing up her big, strong sister. 
and then you can see the beans. Well, uh, I'm sorry, you can't see this as well as you should, but, but beans are growing off and falling over the leaves and arms of her big and strong sister. Now, Sister Squash, we only plant her about every third mound because she's, she's really brash. She comes out there, hey, I'm here, and she um, will take over all the mounds. If you plant her in every mound, all you got is squash, and they're going to uh, kind of take some land from the elder sister and little sister. So we only put her about every third or fourth mound uh, so that she won't take over because that's her brash personality. I have three minutes, not enough time. You know what that is? That's, that's a burial mound. That's the womb of Mother Earth. Burials are putting the spirits back on the earth to be reborn. You know who builds the mounds? Women build mounds. We build all the mounds. The women build all the mounds. This is really rather important. Uh, the outer space story is Sky Woman. I don't have time. That's a nine-day nine cycle. Um, but she uh, came from, from outer space, and uh, Turtle Island is North America. She made the dirt. She made the dirt. She's first put down there. There's no dirt. She need, there's just a little tiny speck of dirt, so she needs more dirt to plant. And so she ceremonially makes dirt, and with every step she takes, dirt spreads out, dirt spreads out. All right, if you're Native American, you know perfectly well that that's a reference to the fact that Indian women made the dirt. We made the dirt. And that's not just composting. We knew how to mix in the nitrogens and the phosphorus. It's enriched, growing dirt. And we've been telling the archaeologists for a heck of a long time, again, you cannot properly see that because of the light, but it's measuring the, the, uh, the anthropologists call it dark earth. We've been telling them for hundreds of years that we did that, but it's not true until they found it in the Amazon. Um, <laughs> but we made the dirt in the American South. Uh, it's red-packed clay. When the settlers first got to America, oh, look at this wonderful growing spell. It was a foot and a half deep because the women had made it over the centuries, over thousands of years. And in 40 years, in 40 years' time with their mobile, um, mold board plow and their terrible crops, they destroyed all that, that dirt we made. It's important that I show you some of these. Okay, I don't have time to show you that, but I want to show you the um, Hohokam canals. Again, the women dug it. Pima's story is very clear. Women dug it. And uh, we always copy things from the sky, which is outer space under Earth. That's part of the connection of the twin ship. The twos are mirroring one another. That's exactly what they're doing. Um, now, look at the, the series of canals. All those little lines are the canals the women dug. That is the Cygnus constellation. That is in the form of the Cygnus constellation. The women made that. And here, let me go back to the great serpent. Oh, dear. It's not going... Uh, anyway, I can't get back to it. I can't get back to it. Yeah, but this thing won't come up for me. <laughs> it doesn't. I turn off electronics. If all I have to do, the secretaries at the university won't even let me go into the office because I walk by electronics and they stop working. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm not, I, well, the talk, uh, there, go back one. There we go. Okay, the Great Serpent Mound is Draco. We mirror, we deliberately mirror the sky. The sky is male, you know, and the earth is female. We do this on purpose. That's an observatory, and if I still have enough time to tell you this, <laughs> that's not an egg in the serpent's mouth. All the anthropologists keep, oh, that's an egg. No, it's not. <laughs> That's the great horned serpent. That's Uktina. He's the great horned serpent. He's the male symbol of Earth. The turtle is a female symbol of Earth. He is very woman friendly. He's very connected to woman. Now, everything has a medicine pouch. Whether or not you know it, you, you've got a potency bag. The women carry theirs with them all, all times. But you also can have another bag, especially the men will have one made of animal skin in which they will put whatever their vision gave them of their dreams and vision gave them. Now, everything has a medicine pouch. 
And when you travel, you, you take it with you. You take it with you. Now, how does a serpent carry his medicine pouch? There's only one way. He extrudes his horns when he travels. And you can see he's traveling. He's, he's running out of his coil. If you've ever seen a snake go out of his coil, he's running out of his coil. He's traveling. And that is um, his medicine pouch. His Ulansuti stone is the, right in the center there. It's a Galena stone. And that's a symbol of his direct earth power connection. Uh, and the women made that to mirror what male breath had already made in the outer space. Okay. All right, and I know I'm way out of time. Thank you for your patience.